We are going to drop down over the cane bay wall this morning. We're going to get down about 100 feet or so. One of the first things we're going to do is we're going to look at this guy. You ever wondered why your photographs look green and blue when you're underwater? If you're a snorkeler and you take pictures and the colors don't look the same way? We're going to figure that out this morning. So we're going to take this color palette with us and we're going to show you what happens to color as we descend in the water column. So stick around. Rico and I are going to show you what it's all about. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Everything Scuba. I'm Lyle. My cohort, Josh, is not with me this week. He is diving in the Florida Keys. Lucky guy. Although I'm pretty lucky too, we're based on where I am. Anyway, Everything Scuba is a YouTube channel dedicated to Everything Scuba. If you're a diver, you want to be a better diver, you want to learn about cool places to come diving, if you've never been diving, you want to learn how to dive, this is the channel to visit. Click the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, don't miss out on upcoming episodes. Obviously, we can't teach you how to dive online, but we can point you in the right direction. So today, I'm on the beautiful island of St. Croix. Behind me here is Cane Bay on the north shore of St. Croix. About 600 yards swim out, drop down, you hit the St. Croix Wall. St. Croix Wall is a portion of the southern end of the Puerto Rican Trench. That drops down a vertical drop of 13,000 feet. As recreational divers, we're never going to see the bottom of that, we hope. We're barely going to scratch the surface. I am wearing a bright red t-shirt today. My question to you today, you science geeks out there, if I drop down 100 feet, does this still look like a red t-shirt? What kind of question is that? Of course, it's red, it's red, it's red. But as we drop through the water column, weird things happen to colors. We're also going to take this guy with us. This shows us all the colors of the visible spectrum red, orange, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And we've got a black one for comparison on the end. So we're going to drop in, we're going to drop down 100 feet, you're going to see what happens to color. And then we're going to explain afterwards why those things happen to color. Stick around. comparison photograph from the surface to 100 feet, you can see there's a significant change in the appearance of colors. The red is almost black. The yellow and green are approaching the same color uh, in appearance. And the blue and indigo are also getting closer in appearance. The brown has lost the red coloration and is now starting to appear green. So you can see that the deeper we go, the longer wavelength of light is lost.
back from our uh, deep dives today. Um, on the, uh, the dive today, we uh, descended down to about 100 feet over the uh, St. Croix wall. And uh, at each increment of that dive, we stopped and we took a look at our color uh, palette here. And we've got uh, red through uh, violet, and we've also got a black one. And you can see that as we descended, we started to lose these colors, particularly the reds and the oranges. Uh, and that's because of the properties that water has in terms of absorption of the uh, wavelengths of light within the color spectrum. And so we tend to lose the reds and oranges and yellows in the first 40, 50, 60 feet. And by the time we got to 100 feet, this looked very dark. Um, you you kind of lost the, the coloration. And so why that's important is because if we are uh, trying to figure out how to set up underwater photography, underwater videography, um, if we didn't use artificial light, which at uh, 100 feet, we put a light on here and you can see it reproduced all of the colors again. It reintroduced those colors because we weren't absorbing all the wavelengths. And so uh, we need to have artificial sources of light uh, at that depth. Now there are some cameras that will artificially recreate those wave wavelengths of light and uh, there's filters now within uh, cameras, the software uh, that can be used to try and artificially recreate it. Most serious underwater photographers are going to use a light source either in the form of a strobe or a video light that can help reproduce some of that uh, color. So, so I wanted to give you a couple of examples of how we would add color to our photographs underwater. So in this first photograph, there is a green sea turtle sitting on a nice sandy bottom. Uh, I took this at about 25 feet below the surface. And as the name would suggest, he really is a looking like a green sea turtle. We've lost a lot of the color uh, with this. And so side-by-side uh, -side comparison using a software filter in post-processing, we were able to adjust the coloration to add back in those lost tones and so you can see how it's a, a much more pleasing appearance to the photograph. In the second picture here, there's a picture of a, a seahorse, and he's wrapped around a piece of uh, sponge. And again, this was taken at about the same depth, and you can see quite a dark picture, hard to make out details, and the sponge that he's attached to looks very dark. And so side-by-side -side comparison, uh, a video light was added here to take the photograph, and uh, really a, a striking difference between the first and second photograph. So again, the sea turtle, uh, you can see it brings out those nice warm tones, adds back in some of the reds and orange hue colors, and the seahorse uh, really brings out that bright yellow nature of the seahorse, and most importantly, because we know we lose the red coloration first, uh, look how red and bright that uh, piece of uh, coral that he's uh, attaching himself to is. So it's always very interesting uh, because when you're diving and the deeper you go things become more blue and more green. Uh, you lose those reds and oranges and yellows uh, and then when you take some photographs underwater using a strobe or a light and you come back to the surface, hey presto, it's pretty colorful down there. So uh, an interesting little science experiment that we thought we'd share with you. And uh, stay tuned because uh, in an upcoming episode, we're going to do a night dive on St. Croix and we are going to do some fluoroscopic underwater photography. You're probably wondering what the heck is fluoroscopic underwater photography. That's why you should stay tuned and come check out that episode. Anyway, if you felt, felt like today uh, was useful, gave you some insights into uh, a little bit on absorption of wavelengths of light underwater, uh, click the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for upcoming episodes. Click the button, ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming shows. So, Stay tuned.